love a good challenge for us big challenges are fun and today I've come up with some, a fun challenge I and mean, this is probably be personal one for me I'm not sure that a lot of you are gonna be doing this one but it is for me this morning I'm embarking on my opening day attraction challenge attractions that were open on opening day and that are still open today and I count 11 of them Jungle Cruise Casey jr. storybook land mr. toads Peter Pan Snow White the Disneyland Railroad, Autopia, King Arthur's Carousel, the Teacups, and Mark Twain in no particular order. Now we're gonna start in Fantasyland because obviously that's where like half uh, of the attractions are that are still open today from opening day. And obviously we're gonna be starting at Peter Pan because that's the attraction, that's the one that's got the, the, the highest potential weight. And if we can, if we're lucky, we can, we can cut a little bit of time off right off the top. Because if we do this anytime after 8 a.m., it's going to be 45 minutes no matter what. So the hope is, we're not at exactly the front of the line, but we're ish. Uh, maybe we could get this done in 20 minutes. I'm not sure. <laughs> so much, so much for that. Peter Pan is not running. Oh my god. <laughs> like, of course, the day I try to do this, the day I try to rope drop Peter Pan, incredible. Uh, we have options. Uh, Storybook Land is actually pretty bad early on, so we're going to save a few minutes. Hopefully, that was my next stop. I guess we're starting there. Check that. We're starting at the teacups. I just realized if I commit 20 minutes to Storybook Land, I'm gonna probably wind up in the back of the line for Peter Pan when it reopens. So I'm gonna to try to stay close to home. Mad Tea Party was open on opening day. And I'm going through this whole queue. <laughs> Presently, I'm actually the, the first and only guest in this attraction. Probably not the best idea, but I probably screwed this up already, I think. Because it takes a while for this thing to load and unload. Now, what's interesting, though, is that the Mad Tea Party, the teacups, weren't here on opening day. They were an opening day attraction, but they weren't here. They were actually approximately where uh, the carousel is. Actually, even a little further up from the... No, no, the carousel was all the way up by Peter Pan, and then the teacups were about where the carousel sits today, which is also an attraction we have to do today. <laughs> it turned out to be the case. First and only guest on the Mad Team. That's something, right? To be the first guest on an attraction. Mad I don't think I'd ever would have imagined myself doing this. Look at, look at. There's nobody here. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking it's not a total loss that we started with the teacups because uh, this is one of those attractions as I mentioned that takes a while for it to, to cycle guests because you could there's not multiple tracks uh, you know it's not a paper mover or an omni mover I mean it takes a while to get people in and then out and the guy's got to walk around and do the whole thing so we did save so there's a net win here in terms of time spent it's a good start I think it, so it, not all the time we're gonna lose at Peter Pan will be lost completely we saved some of it back here <laughs> and actually, it's making me quite happy. <laughs> Added bonus. But then again, all the Fantasyland attractions make me quite happy. So it looks like they just opened Toads. Only problem is, is that I'm competing with a whole mess of people. But I'm going to go ahead and get in this thing because I don't think it's going to get better than this even. So we got in this queue at 8.09, and by the looks of things, it's not going particularly smooth so far. <laughs> it's kind of fits and starts, but it does look like it still will be a time saver. I, I, think, it, I think we're gonna be about 20 minutes in here, and if that is the case, I'm, I'm happy with 20 minutes for Peter Pan. I take that back, I don't think this is gonna be 20 minutes. All those gaps that we're just seeing are being filled in quickly by guests who are out here in the extended queue. This could be the full Monty. Wow, we did it guys, 22 minutes. 22 minutes and that's our boat. Come on everybody, here we go.
Paul is perfect. I just love Peter Pan. That ride is amazing. It makes me so, it's pure whimsy. Peter Pan, the ride, Peter Pan, the movie, it's just pure whimsy. It makes me so happy. I have, I, now I need to get home. Hey, good morning. And watch Peter Pan, the movie. Got to. That's a, uh, a very stuck Casey Jr. And that is an attraction that is on our list today. Not a good sign. Uh, I chose Storybook Land as our next visit because you'll never see this again. You come here around noon and this thing is full and it's out to here. So I'm gonna try to save a few minutes on Storybook Land right now. You got room? And away we go. Want me to stop? Want me to stick them? Want me now to guarantee wolf for fruit to protect them from the big bad wolf? And to my right is London Park. This is the park for Wendy, John, and Michael Darling. First took flight with the Alpha Tinker around her pixie dust. They went off to Neverland. Second star on the right. Straight on tail morning with Peter Pan. Where they would never ever have to grow up. The sun doors were happy to offer her protection. They sing, they dance, they had a great time. You can hear them whistle while they work. While Tyho also worked, they go in their beautiful minds. But now Snow White lives happily ever after with her beautiful friends. And straight ahead is Alpine Village, where Wood Carver named Geppetto. Which the a star for his puppet to become a real boy. Thanks to Blueberry, that wish was granted after his puppet Pinocchio saved them from Monster of the Well. And as we approach the dog and close the book in our story, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. You know, part of me kind of hesitates to include Storybook Land uh, because when the, when the attraction opened, it did here, it was here on opening day, but when the attraction opened, it wasn't anything, anything like what we see here. It was literally just dirt. They call it the uh, canal boats of the world, and that's all it was. They, they, I think the joke was the mud banks of the world. There was no vegetation, no, no, no flowers, no show, no anything, just boats. Today, obviously, it's a magical thing. It makes me happy, and it kind of reminds me uh, why I'm, I'm happy to do this today. I'm happy to do the opening day challenge because I love each and every one of these attractions, all of them. I, I am not pressed one bit to ride any of these. Even the carousel, I love the carousel. Uh, opening day attractions, attractions that were you know, designed and, or inspired or thought of, conceived of by Walt. They hit me right in, the, right in my uh, Walt's Bar t-shirt. Love it. So uh, I think we gotta choose between Toad and Snow White now, or the carousel. Carousel it is, and as it turns out, we were able to walk right on. Perfect timing. The carousel just finished its rotation. We got in at the last second. So it's a walk on for the carousel. That's a win, man. We're having an improved morning so far. Didn't start out very good, but it's getting better. Now, like what we were talking about before, we're on the tea party, the teacups. This carousel used to be right there. Can you imagine the bottleneck that that would have created? And where we are now on the carousel is where the teacups were. Teacups here, carousel there. If you think it's packed in here now, imagine back then. By the way, did you happen to notice the Peter Pan queue as we flew by? Even though we spent a solid 25 minutes, well near 25 minutes getting in there, we did save 20 minutes probably maybe 10 or 15 because that queue is now doubled out 906 we finished the knockout four four rides already is that right that's pretty good snow white we're gonna give this a shot next although uh <laughs> we missed our window for snow white but i mean how many windows can we hit at rope drop right so we're gonna do the best we can here although this looks like at least 20 to 30 minutes <laughs> Actually, the third iteration of a Snow White attraction here at Disneyland. This is the third. Was this one, then they remodeled it in, 2000, or, uh, in the 80s, I think it was. They added this during the shutdown. Not bad timing for toads. When we walked by here before, the line was actually longer. So this is maybe 10 or 15 minutes, I think. Things are looking great. Now, this 
attraction does feel like it would be exactly like it was when the park is reopened, but it has gone through some changes as well. I don't know what they are. I can't find any really old video of the attraction. But it does feel like this is exactly like how an attraction would have been, this attraction would have been in 1955. Well, good feelings gone. Uh, it's 940 and whatever momentum we had going for us has completely stopped here at Casey Jr. Uh, there's a huge queue down here. No, the preferred situation is that the queue is up there, up the steps and not down here into the uh, common area next to the or I shouldn't say common area, but into the area next to the seating tables. Uh, I'm gonna stay in this queue until I can determine whether or not there's two trains. If there's just one train, which I think there is, then I'm gonna get out of this queue and head over to Adventureland, I think. So I'm gonna hope that I'm gonna come back later and hit it when there are two trains. But if there is just the one, or if there's two trains, I think I'll stay in this queue. But this does not look good, this is bad. Jungle Cruise it is, guys. Not sure if you caught that, but uh, it's a 15 minute wait. I didn't see anybody upstairs either, so we may uh, be very fortunate to pick up the momentum again here at Jungle Cruise. It took us just a few minutes to walk over here. We are going to go upstairs, but I think we're going to come right back down. Ten oh five, not bad. It looks like our timing was pretty good. Again, the queue has grown significantly since we walked or entered the queue ourselves. It might have seemed like a good idea, a good opportunity to ride the Mark Twain at this point, which by the way is reopened. Uh, I think it reopened yesterday. But the Mark Twain is kind of unique as an attraction in that there really is no queue. Uh, anybody who wants to get in the Mark Twain will catch the Mark Twain, the next one that comes through. Hardly, there's, there's hardly ever a scenario where you have to wait a boat. So I'm gonna put that off until the last. So I'm gonna do a drive-by back at Casey Jr. to see if uh, they're running two trains yet or if the queue's gotten any better. And if that's not the case, if it's not any better there, then I'm heading over to Autopia and hope that that's okay. It's a little risky to ride Autopia early in the morning also because in the same, for the same reason as Casey Jr. because uh, they sometimes only run two, two lanes. It could be late enough in the morning that they might have opened up a third lane, but it'll be a little bit dicey. Yeah, that's the only train going right now. Still one train at Casey Jr. So I'm gonna roll the dice. Uh, I'm gonna head over to Autopia and hope that they're running three lanes there and then come back, I guess, and just hope that the line's better, I guess, at Casey Jr. We're gonna do that. It's gonna be Autopia, then Casey Jr., uh, then the Disneyland Railroad, probably, and then we're gonna end with the Mark Twain. Now, I'm doing this by memory only, but if memory serves, right here in this general area, speaking of Autopia, there was another Autopia circuit track, a junior Autopia, I want to say it's in this general vicinity. It didn't last very long though. Actually, there was at one point, again, if memory serves, I think they had at one point, they had three separate Autopia tracks running at Disneyland, which is wild, considering how unpopular they are today. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at that and I'm like, no way, it's 10 minutes. You can see all these people here. In the queue, uh, and it looks like we are running just two lanes. Oh my god, I am so, so screwed. <laughs> this is not going to go well. I wonder if now would be a good time. Disneyland Railroad. And look at that, just as I take off here, you can see that they have opened up the third lane. So I don't know if this was a good idea or a bad idea at this point. I mean, we at least got the third lane open, but it might have improved our time. As we steam past Hungry Bear Restaurant, the last outpost in these parts, we're now joining up with the rivers of America and entering the frontier as it looked more than a century and a half ago. This is my favorite part of the journey. 
know, the best part about this on railroad is that the whole the whole there is the revered Indian shaman sharing the story with this those those great great river river desire to have world. not just a model train, which is where his home like, started with a model train, then a train in his backyard, but then you know a near full size train itself. Everything about this one starts. People like you, this railroad, of course, this on railroad, traveling through the Wonderland, and our part of our adventure time. Stagecoach. Steam power not only fueled these iron horses, but the dreams of a whole new generation of Indian travelers. Stagecoach. Steam power not only fueled these iron horses, but the dreams of a whole new generation as it moved west into this great frontier. Of course, some of those dreams and the stories that went with them were pretty darn wild and downright unbelievable. I just got a bit of a chill doing that. I don't think I've ever been that close while on the train to the Mark Twain. Kind of seen it up over here and up over there a little bit, but not like you could almost touch it. That was really neat. No matter what we, what attraction we do, once you get into the 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock neighborhood, every ride we go on is going to be worse than it would have been had we been on at 8 or 9 or 10 in the morning. So it's not the worst case scenario. And if the post of wait time of 30 minutes is accurate, hi, how are you? Uh, if that time is accurate, then it only cost us five minutes. But if we took a gamble, eh, maybe it pays off, we'll see. Oh, wait, I just realized I misspoke. I thought we had only two attractions. We have four. We have Autopia. We have Casey Jr. and Mark Twain. Mark Twain is going to be 20 minutes minimum. That's a 15 minute ride no matter what. There's no fast way to do Mark Twain. That's 20 minutes. That includes walking in there and maybe even, you know, getting right on the boat. It could be another 5 or 10 minutes before the boat comes around depending on what time we show up. Casey Jr. is going to be 30 minutes. And if we're lucky, this is 30 minutes, but it's actually 30 minutes to wait plus another 10 minutes to get around. So we're looking at 40, I mean, best case scenario, we're looking at 12.30, we're looking at four and a half hours. And I feel like we kind of were optimal in a lot of ways. So that four hour benchmark that we set this morning is a little aggressive and that's a good target if you're trying to, uh, if you're trying to beat this challenge. Looks like they've actually got all four lanes running and still it's a crawl. We've been in this queue now for 20 minutes. Once again, Autopia is trying really hard to screw everything up, man. I'm giving serious thought, serious consideration to doing Autopia first if we were ever to try this again. It's a hot spot today. I, you can save so much time here. If you, were, if you road drop Autopia, that's an easy 30 or 40 minute savings. Can you say the same about Peter Pan? Considering the competition for Peter Pan, everybody's trying to rope drop Peter Pan. Like I did this morning, I rope dropped it and I still had waited 25 minutes. I would seriously consider that. Four lanes running and it still took us a half an hour to get through everything. Plus the, I don't know, eight or 10 minutes it's gonna take us to ride. Man, this is gonna be so good. Four and a half hours we're looking at. You're probably gonna think I'm lame, but I'm kind of excited. We're in lane four, in the green lane. I don't remember the last time I've been in the green lane. Make sure you're not bumping or pushing that car in front of you and you are good to go out front. Thirty minutes into our vehicle. Woo. Ta -da. See, look at that already. This side, you go left of Osimo instead of right. Most of the time, they're running the two far right lanes, and then sometimes the third left lane, and then hardly never the fourth lane that we're in now. It's a new frontier, freshman. <laughs> we're exploring today. <laughs> hey, you know, it kind of bums me out a little bit. But on a long enough time, like, oh, look at it. I don't know why I like to see cross traffic on the Utopia. On a long enough timeline, this challenge that we're doing today will go from 11 attractions to 10. Because Utopia will eventually close, and then that won't be an opening day attraction anymore. That makes me sad. I mean, 
How long do you think we can go? How long can we go keeping all of these attractions in the park? I mean, really, it hasn't actually been that long. And we've lost so many. What, 20 attractions? Opening day attractions are gone. I mean, when you think about it, right? We've lost 20 attractions in 65 years. That's significant. And that, not, not a very long time, I guess. Although, you compare that to some uh, theme parks, <laughs> there's hardly anything left of what it used to be. I just hope, as a steward of the history of Disneyland, oh, I hear that train again, that we find some way to keep attractions like this. That we find some way to keep these intact for as long as possible. And it's a busy, busy day today on Autopia, man. You hardly ever see this many cars out. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> we really are in the thick of it now. It's 11.40 trying to find our way back into Fantasyland and I'm really nervous about what is going to be waiting for us at Casey Jr. because we have no choice but to ride it now. Two attractions left. The Mark Twain is going to be last no matter what we do. So it's Casey Jr. or nothing right now. Well, it's not too bad. It's not better in terms of the length of the queue. It's not maybe a little bit worse. What? No matter what happens, we didn't lose that gamble. Casey Jr. number nine has arrived. It's 12.08. Uh, so that took us 28 minutes to get to this point. Kind of interesting. Casey Jr. This isn't the original concept that they had for Casey Jr. It was actually going to be something closer, something approaching a roller coaster. Not quite, you know, goofy sky school, but sort of that level of kids roller coaster that you see when you go to like a, a state fair uh, or you know a local fair or something like that. It was supposed to be faster and more up and down. But I guess they felt like the trains couldn't handle that kind of action. The, the, the science of it didn't work out. So we got a much improved version. A version that gives us this. I'm out of what, in the category of timing, this went from super bad to super amazing. I was walking up the Big Thunder Trail right here, right? And I could see the twain, and I could hear the paddles moving, and I thought, I'm too late, they're already taking off. But luckily I got in just in time. They were just putting the ropes up, the guy said secure cargo as soon as, just as I walked on, so we saved ourselves 15 minutes off our time. So we're looking at being done, maybe, at 4.35? As soon as this guy's done. Welcome to the Mark Twain. I'm actually really happy that we were able to finish uh, this challenge on the Mark Twain because as far as opening day attractions go, 
they don't get any more opening day than the Mark Twain. Some people know this story, but when you think about it, you process it. This is pre-opening day. The Mark Twain is pre-opening day. There were guests aboard this ship before the park opened. Walt and uh, Lillian had their wedding anniversary here at Disneyland at the Golden Horseshoe. But before they celebrated in the Golden Horseshoe, the, the entire party took a trip around the rivers of America on the Mark Twain, on this Mark Twain, before the park opened. <laughs> I'm sure I'm glad that the Davy Crockett canoes weren't an opening day attraction. <laughs> Can you imagine what kind of wrinkle that would have put into our day? Thank goodness. But it has been a, a little while since I've been on the canoes. That's it guys. Four hours and 35 minutes. We just deboarded the Mark Twain, completed our adventure in four hours and 35 minutes. Definitely room for improvement, just like it was the case uh, for our DCA uh, challenge where we included Lightning Lane. By the way, you can, I guess you can include Lightning Lane in this if you want. Uh, that'll save you some time on Autopia, but that's the only attraction that has Lightning Lane uh, at, of, of those 11. So <laughs> do you, I guess, but I did mine without it. Uh, a couple things, places where we could have improved. We, we could have got luckier with Peter Pan if we had, if it hadn't, if it had opened on time. We might have saved a few minutes. Uh, well, we would have saved maybe 10 or 15 minutes on that. Uh, I would actually make Casey Jr. a candidate for a rope drop because it's in the same neighborhood as the rest of Fantasyland, so that might improve your chances of not waiting in that 30 minute line, just like we did for Autopia. If you can rope drop Casey Jr. and definitely get on that first, that saves you 30. Because if you don't hit it first, well, I guess maybe, you know, we had really bad luck. We had bad luck with Casey. I would have probably tried to do it sooner if it had been open at the same time, let's say, as we did Storybook Land. Uh, but the real lesson here is, is the possibility of Autopia. But then again, that separates you also from the rest of Fantasyland. Oh boy. Because you know, if you don't get if you don't get Peter Pan at the right time, you're not you're gonna wait 20 or 30 minutes. That's just the bottom line. If you don't get there first thing, if you're not amongst the first guests, you're gonna lose 30 minutes. All in all, I would probably say it's still probably best to do Peter Pan first and see if you get lucky. After that, it's a total crapshoot, man. Whether or not you beat four and a half hours is is, is, is a lot of it is luck. Uh, we had some good luck today and some bad luck. Our timing on the Mark Twain was great luck. Our timing on some of the things wasn't so great. Posted. Four hours, 35 minutes. Fresh baked. Give it your shot. Otherwise, follow us on Instagram at underscore fresh baked. On Twitter at fresh baked Disney. That's fresh with no E. And on TikTok at Fresh Baked Disney. And if you like our show, want to show your support, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash freshbaked. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, everybody. We love you very much. We'll see you next time. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. Fresh Baked.